Hello, everyone, and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Monday, May 8th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember, everyone, you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Nathan, how are you doing today? Oh, I feel like poop. You know, good thing you don't look like poop. Oh, whoa. What's up? I just found some cool shit if I Monopoly things that might be... Uh... Free uh, little things from cars. Oh, yeah? Maybe like a, a little free hot dog? Oh, like a little bagel. I got one right here. I got an instant donut or bagel. That's not my thing of the day, though. I don't really care about that. No? Well, you do, depending on how hungry you are. Uh, currently, I'm pretty hungry, and I don't care enough about it to go down there. That's fair. Is there food in your house right now? I mean, yeah, there's a bit. I had this really delicious breakfast thing that I made this morning because I felt like shit and I really wanted something delicious. Yeah. I took a tortilla and I lined it with um, a little bit of jelly and peanut butter and marshmallow. And then I started, I put a bit of butter in a skillet and some cinnamon and I fried it in the cinnamon butter. That does not sound like something that would help you feel better. No, but it was delicious. All right. Anything else? So what'd you do all day then? Cause you said you didn't go to work? Yeah, I um, I took some medication, and then I tried to relax on the couch as the medication took hold of me. I watched like two episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and then passed the book out until like, until, like six. And then I woke up at like six-ish and I was like, eh, what should I do? So I started playing a little bit of, of uh, a game on Steam and, and then now here I am. Wonderful. Do you think you're actually like just sorry, excuse me, you think you were actually just sick or you think it was more of a like um lack of sleep? No, I feel like I'm actually sick because mm. I still feel pretty bad and I slept the entire day. Sure. Cuz like I know I have that issue a lot when uh if I don't get enough sleep then I'll start feeling all kinds of sick. Mhm. Mm so super annoying, but it's what happens when you stay up till like 11.30 playing D&D &D and still have to take fuckers home. Yeah. It's alright. It was fun though. I enjoyed the session yesterday. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's pretty good? You ready for? You ready to do some new stuffs? Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it? Alright. Ten. Eight-year-old helps save mom a week after dad dies. This was submitted by Wayne453 to our uplifting news. So, uh, his father had died just about 10 days previously. Um, he died in a, in a car accident and he was sitting there at, and having lunch with his mom and his mom started choking. And so he very calmly got up and walked over and called 911 and had paramedics sent out to, to his house before the paramedics got there though. Uh, she was able to dislodge the food that was in her throat. And so the, they went ahead and gave her a check over anyway, but so he he was a very controlled kid as he went That's into this. I um I read a story of, about a controlled kid who learned a bit of stuff from World of Warcraft once. Yeah. Um, he was walking with it. It was like in Norway or something, and he was walking home from school with his sister, and they saw a very disgruntled moose, and the moose uh, wanted to charge them, so he um he learned a bit about fights from World of Warcraft and he quote pulled aggro away from his <laughs> sister. Okay. Uh, the moose went and headbutted him in the back but luckily his backpack protected the blow fr uh, from it a bit and he after being hit lied on the ground and pretended to be dead and they were like and the moose was like oh okay this guy's dead I'm going to sniff you a bit make sure you're dead and I'm going to leave and he left. Well, good thing the moose didn't do the fucking trample shit that they do. Yeah, I have nightmares from that shit, all right? From seeing moose trample things? Yeah, there used to, I, I realized that my, my childhood died when I, uh, I was walking through a field at night that was dark, and instead of worrying about werewolves and fa vampires, I worried about moose. A true Alaskan. It, it, it's scary shit. That's understandable. Uh, I, I saw... A, you don't realize just how big they are until you're real close to one. It was when I was when I was working at, at the courthouse for security, we were living in this apartment complex and it had a raised platform when you walked out the door. Mm 
and the platform was probably about two feet up and I walk out in the morning to go to work and I walked out and I closed the door and as I closed the door there's a moose right here right beside my head and I look over and he's chewing on a hunk of tree branch and I'm like hello Gary no thank you and he's just going to work huh and I was like Yep, I'm going to walk over to my truck now very slowly. <laughs> and then my brain realized I'm standing on a platform that's two feet up in the air, and I'm looking at this creature in the eyes. It's really tall. It It's huge. And it will clear that two feet like it's a goddamn... A joke? Yeah. Uh, like a, yeah, like a fucking long-distance like jumper. It looked like deers. Not long-distance, I guess it's height. Whatever. I, I understood. Nine. John Oliver wants you to flood the FCC website to save net neutrality. Again. This, this was submitted by TT Marmy to our politics. So, in response to the entire thing with the FCC and everything that is going on, are we freezing a lot? Nathan, are we freezing on your end? Mm. Kendall's saying we're freezing. Maybe it's her, though. All right, well. I, I've been, I haven't seen it freeze yet. It's uh, running smooth on my end, but I'm not sure if that... I don't know. Anyway, so... In response to the whole thing about the FCC and how they're wanting to roll back protection for net neutrality, um, John Oliver, if you don't recall the fifth ever episode of Last Week Tonight, um, John Oliver also at that point did also discuss net neutrality and he requested everyone that was listening to him, no matter who you are, what you are, anything like that, send letters to the FCC encouraging them to enforce net neutrality. And... They shut down the FCC website because of how much, many pieces of correspondence were being received. Similar thing happened this weekend. Nice. John Oliver made a similar request because of the rollbacks of protection based on net neutrality that are going to be occurred. And he's also bought several websites. Uh, he, he just bought a new one called Just Tell Me If I'm Related to a Nazi.com. Nice. Uh, that just directs directly to the Federal Communication Commission's website. Um, he also has a website, uh, gofccyourself.com. That's actual pure gold yep. right there. Also, uh, that, that leads directly to the FCC's public comment area. But he wants everyone, anyone, no matter who you are, if you use Facebook, if you're an Instagram model, if you just, you know, want to play the occasional video games, because the important thing is, is that with the way that the FCC has things lined up right now, is that... They want to roll back the standardized protections that you have for the large companies, large service providers to provide you on the promise that you will, that they will not obstruct or slow down any of your speeds based on any website or anything and that that promise will be in their terms of service john oliver made this compared he's like yeah that would make net neutrality about as binding as a proposal on the bachelor can can you imagine like being like two two and a half hours into a raid and like your internet gets throttled like a motherfucker comcast was like you know what we don't like blizzard right now yep. it just completely fucks you or you're in a competitive match and on like Overwatch for your Grandmasters. No, and that's the thing is like they they can make that promise, but I I don't buy it. I want actual laws that say that they can't dick with us, just in case you know. Well, the other thing is is because those if they have control over what access you have to which websites and at what speed, they can control who is successful and who is not. Mm -hmm. So. It is a, uh, a very large concern, but uh, be sure to let the FCC know that uh, you, you care. That they can go FCC themselves. Yes. What does FCC stand for, Nathan? Uh, Federal Communications something. No, 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 not literally. What, like... Oh. If they can go FCC themselves, what, what can they, what, what does that, what does that translate to? Um... Fornicating, um, dang, fornicating cheetahs, cheetah, fornicating cheetos, <laughs> commission. No, Co cooperation. You have to, you have to have multiple people for it. Okay, got it. There you go. Just in case you know. I'm not sure how that makes sense if you're telling them to go FCC themselves, uh, but whatever. 
whatever. Whatever. It, it was a stretch anyway. Eight. Are customers willing to pay to let cars drive for them? <laughs> so submitted by Mavia to our science. Everybody in the chat room, are you willing to let a car drive for you? Yes or no? Nathan, are you willing to let a car drive for you? I mean, I don't talk to cab drivers. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> sure. What about if the car didn't have a driver? Uh, then I would be taking a bus, wouldn't I? <laughs> Well, no, not a bus, like a, uh, I guess trains have conductors. Certain trains don't, though. What are you getting at? I mean, like, self-driving cars, it's not like we don't, it's, it's more secluded than if you took a public transportation vehicle. Yeah, sure. But would you be okay with one? I mean, I, I take public transportation as is. Yeah, but... I, th th I sit there on my, on my phone pretending that nobody else exists. I think I'll be fine if nobody actually does exist. I think you'll be better, actually. Now, what would you be willing to pay to have a car, to have the functionality of a car, uh, of self-driving technology added to a vehicle? Uh, do I own the vehicle? Or... Sure, yeah. Fuck, I don't know. If I own the vehicle, not too much more. Maybe like an extra thousand. Yeah. I'm pretty broke as is. Well... Yeah, I'm real broke too. But what do you think would be a fair number? Well, if 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 it was, if about it tree fifty, about tree fifty. I mean, I pay I pay two dollars to get on a bus to, right now. I'll pay tree fifty. And for a permanent, god damn it. <laughs> um, after uh, a scientific study, which this will link to, it's it, and uh, fair warning by the way, it is the actual science report like it's like you know hypothesis application conclusion etc like it's not like an article like this is straight up the fucking new the science report yeah. they, they found that people are willing on average to pay roughly thirty five hundred dollars for limited self-driving technology and five grand for fully self-automation okay that's a little too much for me but you know well, Nathan, a lot of stuff is too much for us. I mean, you're not wrong. Jennifer Cruz in the chat room says, as long as there would be an emergency manual override, I, she would take a self-driving car. I'm pretty not sure... Not everyone has a friend named Manual. Really? Really? Yeah. It's a pun! <sighs> this is what I have to deal with. This is my life. Okay, so... I'm pretty sure that those will be required, that there is an emergency manual override. Look at a bunch of people named Manual. God damn it, shut the fuck up. I, I have a friend named Emmanuel, does that count? No. Does he? Oh, I need an actual friend named Manual, not Manuel. No, no that doesn't uh, count I would, I would like there to be an emergency bat manual override. That, that's, an emergency bat manual so friggin like you like emergency goes off and a little slot opens and a book slides out bat manual teaches teach you how to be batman bat no it's got bat wings it teaches you how to be a bat there you go even better quick fly the car just can drove get, off a cliff can i get a an emergency lexicon override Kendall says, until everyone no longer knows how to drive anyway, yeah, I imagine we'll probably get to that point. There still will be people who know how to drive because of reasons. Like, they, they like racing or something. Yeah. But, I mean, honestly, though, I don't care. I And I'm someone who really loves driving. It used to be my job to drive all day, every day. And it was, I enjoyed it. But at the same time, I'd really love for my vehicle to drive itself. You don't have to do anything. You can sit there and fucking read a book or nap. play video games nap i guess there can be alarm when you arrive yeah sure the car will probably tell you anyway people are terrible drivers most of the time anyway says jennifer cruz it's true and they've also proven that if you can even get a portion of the cars on the road to be completely self-automated it drastically reduces not only the number of accidents but also the amount of traffic uh, oh yeah yeah Definitely. Because the self-automated vehicles will automate themselves to uh, to with the systems we do have to know that, oh, there's a lot of traffic over here. We will divert ourselves around this way to areas where there is less traffic, which will 
automatically make there be less traffic in the congested areas so all of traffic will flow better and with their current study only 10 percent of the cars on the road need to be self-automated to reduce accidents by about 40 percent and reduce traffic by about 30 percent that's what's up by just those 10 percent being smarter i i, I like that because uh, let's face that it would we be dumb. really cool as as a passion as a passenger on most buses i think that would be fantastic because the bus system is always late always when do they switch over to the every 15 minutes thing uh i don't know i know there's a new transit in october so probably then yeah i wish them luck so i'll be taking oh oh sorry go ahead instead of bus like instead of bus seven which actually i, I do take bus seven seven a or seven j doesn't matter i get to my place either, either way. way um instead of that i'll be taking like bus 71 are they adding a bunch of buses then they are upping the numbers. Okay. EPA removes half of half of scientific boards seeking industry aligned replacements. This was submitted by Bulldog seventy five to our news. A our bad news. Yeah. So Scott Pruitt, the new head of the EPA, who has sued the EPA multiple times for his when he was affiliated with multiple uh, oil conglomerates, now the head of it because that's the way this world works right now. Because it's a conglomerate. You know? He has uh, removed. Well. He's not removed. He has not reappointed half of one of the science boards for the EPA and instead going to be looking to fill those positions with industry aligned replacements, which means people that are being appointed to or aligned with the resource industry because too much. The, the, the reason the argument being is that it hurts the industry immensely when they are overregulated by things like the EPA. So they want people that are in there that understand the understand the pains of the industry on the science boards for the Environmental Protection Agency. Okay, I can understand wanting someone on there that understands the other side, right? Sure. But there are things that the other side are doing make it easier for them that they would love to continue doing that ruins literally fucking everything it's true so if they can knock their shit off and just listen to the people who are telling them not to do that thing then we'll be fine nope because that would cost them money that's real unfortunate for them they need to stop being goddamn greedy assholes they have so much money is the thing like it, it baffles me. And, you know, maybe... Uh, and it, it's easy for me to say this, being the broke asshole that I am, and turning me into a rich asshole. I mean, I don't know what that would do to me as a person, because I don't think anyone can legitimately say how they would act from being, you know, somebody who is broke as dirt right now. I mean, we're I'm on day like 5 after my bank account said negative $4 or whatever the fuck it is that we said last week when we were talking. Only day 5? That's cute. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You're on day what? 72? <laughs> uh when did when did I get my when did I get my last check? Uh it would have been about 10 days ago. So it was on that day. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, turning me into someone that either has or is in control of billions of dollars, I don't know. But I do know, though, that they have huge overhead and huge bank accounts. So, like, I do care about the environment. And I don't understand how there could be something that is that large of a hassle. that you, Because all it does is alienate you as a company. Again, Kendall got it right. Understanding someone's feels is not science. Yeah, and I mean, understanding that you're hurting the environment shouldn't be science either. Mm -hmm. Understanding you're being a giant dickhead is also not science. Six. The FBI paid $900,000 to unlock the San Bernardino terrorist's iPhone. Wow, that was submitted by R. Bevins to R. News. So, previously, this information was not available. Um, they because the FBI did not say one which company they paid to hack into the iPhone or how much they paid. 
Now, there was a lawsuit going on for a Freedom of Information Act request through the Associated Press. They were suing them for that information because they weren't giving it up. The only thing that had been said at that point was that um, Comey, the head of the FBI, had said that the government paid more than he would earn in his remaining seven years on the job. That amount would be roughly $1.3 million. Um, Senator Dianne Feinstein, um, the top Democrat of the Senate committee that oversees the FBI during a conversation, said that the government paid $900,000 to break into the iPhone. Jesus Christ. Now, we had talked about this previously. There was a massive law case going on between the FBI and Apple because the FBI wanted Apple to unlock the phone. And the way that Apple has designed the phone, it's not supposed to be able to do that. You're not supposed to be able to hack into it at all. Mm -hmm. And so that whole case was going down until the FBI pulled the case back because they found someone else that could do it. <laughs> Apparently, they paid these people somewhere in the ballpark of a million dollars to break into a single phone. That's a lot of fucking money for a single phone. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Note to self, put locks on my phone. Ask for money next time I'm arrested. Uh, I don't think that's how it works. Oh. The Freedom of Information Act request from the Associated Press against the FBI is still ongoing, although it is expected that the FBI will release the details of how they got into the phone later this year. After the case is over? Yes, so. I mean, because the other thing is, is that if... I, I, we, we talked about it back when the case was going on and when they did initially pull it because Apple was then concerned like, hey, if you found a weakness in our security, you have to tell us so that we can fix it. Yeah, definitely. Because otherwise, if you found a way in, bad Everybody guys can find a way in. Find yeah, exactly. So Maybe you, that's what Russia was doing. So you have to give us the opportunity to fix it. And uh, I don't, there's no information on what actually came of that. And the FBI hasn't commented. Yeah. Because, uh, of course, they wouldn't. Because FBI doesn't like to comment on anything these days. No, definitely not. Except, uh, except that they're starting their um, investigative process on Hillary's um, emails over again. Oh. Sure. Five. The world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data. Like like emails? Kind of. This was submitted by Specs to our Futurology. That is a piece of it. So it has been proven now that the newest commodity that is worth the most is, is not actually any tangible resource, but, but data. Data th from companies like Google, Facebook, Tesla, Uber, Amazon, Microsoft that have data about you specifically okay, your you Nathan, information your your data is what's worth the most <laughs> i can get a whole lot of absolutely fucking nothing well and because this has been raising a lot of questions because also it's very lightly regulated because like when the oil industry got huge they had a lot of regulations placed on them and the big oil conglomerates had to be broken up into pieces so that they didn't get too large but it's difficult to value the weight of assets when it is just a bunch of information. I, I feel like that's a, a great thing to, to need to learn how to value, though, because a lot of people don't need their information spilled everywhere. Well, and here's the other part, though, is that that information is very often given willingly. Also, mm -hmm. they don't charge you. Like... Facebook is free. Google is free. Like, I mean, so, I mean, all of it is just stuff that they just collect passively. But for the one of the biggest, like, egregious examples of how valuable data is, is that Facebook a few years ago bought WhatsApp, which was a messenger app. Uh, the app itself had less than 60 employees. They had zero revenue. And Facebook bought them for $22 billion. And it's pure. It was purely a data buy. Okay, so feel if you are agreeing to their terms and services, right, and are using their services a lot. Like if I'm using my Facebook a lot, all the damn I time. I feel like I feel like they should be able to use some of that information. Sure. Right. Not selling it. Them themselves using it. Well, okay. and in some cases they are. I mean, because like Facebook and Google 
almost have the entirety of the digital advertising market. That's true. Almost yeah. the whole thing is purely Google and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is not necessarily them selling information to advertisers, but maximizing the efficiency and effectiveness of the ads that can be placed. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, Nathan, we see that, you know, you, you know, do a lot of gaming stuff and play Overwatch. So we're going to recommend selling you this cool Genji spinner. You know, see, that's something I don't mind. Because it lets me see, that's what Facebook's doing with those t-shirts that pop up on my on my feed every now and then. I don't actually mind that too much because, you know, hey, I would definitely buy that t-shirt. That's a sick t-shirt. Yeah, Rick and Morty. Yeah, I would buy that Genji spinner. That's a fucking sick-ass Genji spinner. And I fidget a lot. I'm fidgeting with these things now. I usually fidget with the business cards. Sure. That's why I look down a lot. So... And then, I mean, but these companies, so Alphabet, Google's parent company, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Microsoft, they are massive. I mean, those companies, first off, are the five most valuable listed, valuable companies in the world. Over half of all online money goes through Amazon. Facebook has a billion users. Google is used by 95% of the world as its search engine. 90% of the world uses Microsoft's Windows operating system. I mean, it's kind of an, a monopoly, but at the same time, when your product is that good. And that's the thing, though, is like, we've talked about it before. It's like, they have so much money and so much power, but at the same time, we almost don't care because they're not shitbags. Well, pu publicly not shitbags. Right. I mean, I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, Tim Cook could be a total asshat, but at least for the most part, their company as a public figure is relatively feels like they're on the side of the people. Yeah. And here's the other problem, though, is like with the oil industry, when they split the oil industry up, that doesn't work with this because it's not a matter of like resources and like physical things. It's literally just a bunch of text. Yeah, it's a bunch of text files saved. Like, what? what how are you going to split Facebook up? Okay, so, like, part of the users have to go over to MySpace now. Oh, yeah. Some other users have to go over to LinkedIn. Uh, things can no longer log in using your Facebook. For instance, your Tinder no longer logs in using your Facebook. Dude, your everything logs in with your, your Facebook. Instagram. Your well, well fa Facebook owns Instagram. Well, I mean, no longer. They have to break up the conglomerate. Everything has stories now, though. Well, and the other thing is, is like with the when, you know, 100 years ago, when oil was the, becoming this massive thing and to the point that it had to be broken up, you could very easily, vi easily visually see the damage that was caused by those tycoons. It is so much harder to see any negative repercussions of all of this data being passed around. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I um, I use a lot of my information just kind of willy nilly. Man, most people do. Also, because I feel like a lot of people have resigned themselves to the point now that. It's you, you like a lot of people have become so aware that it is so easy to get that they don't put much value on their own personal information. It's like because it, it, I remember, you know, when I was when I was a kid, mom was like, don't let anyone ever know your social security's number. And now everything in the fucking world asks for your social security number. And it's like your credit card number whatever everyone's fucking got it your 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 address your phone everything it's all just right there for like, anyone to see and and it's like when you were a kid you were told to never talk to anybody any strangers online but yet now now it's like we're trying to get strangers to watch our show where we talk about ourselves personally sometimes no oh, yeah no it's it's true it's also one of the reasons that like i i mean for multiple reasons, I'm like, I should not try to hide anything because 
there's no way that it's going to stay hidden, especially if we gain any actual traction in, like, the world of creation. Exactly. And, like, you shouldn't have to hide anything. So, we'll see, though. And th they're calling on there being a, uh, like, a... Well, how do you phrase it? Like, a for some sort of regulation to be imposed on data and it being, like, passed around and stuff, but... That's a very difficult thing to do because mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot of like a lot of law is based on precedence about what's happened before. And this is so new. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand not knowing what to do. This is just like it's like the infrastructure up here when we legalized marijuana. It took an, a while before like places actually opened up for for sales because there was just there was no legislation you had to build everything from scratch well and also like the sheer amount is also difficult to to evaluate because like you know facebook probably has a lot of information on you but it's probably like it's probably a lot of like sensitive information but it might be all of what 200 lines of text yeah Probably. It's probably more realistically, but, you know, it's probably relatively small compared to, like, Tesla, who is also a, a data whore, that, like, because they're pioneering self-driving car technology, and those computers, everything has a computer in it. Your fridge collects data on you if, if you have a, a new enough fridge, and so does cars, because all cars have computers now, and Tesla is one of them. And Tesla pioneering self-driving cars, it's estimated that... A self-driving car, if it was to remit all of the data that it goes through in a single minute, would be around 100 gigabytes. God damn. That's insane. And so, how do you value data? Because, like, it's so vague, yet it can become so specific. Right, it's just knowledge. How yeah. Do you, yeah, how do you value what somebody knows? And, and that's Gold the, pieces. <laughs> so, we'll see what happens. I mean, like, like I said before, for the most part, these companies are people that we kind of like. So, hopefully, for the most part. hopefully it stays that way. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they don't, you know, go rogue, be dickhead. Four. United Airlines flies woman 4,800 kilometers in the wrong direction. United Airlines. They just can't win. They just can't <laughs> win. They're just etern like uh, someone <laughs> fucking just bad jujued them like horribly. Their 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 CEO must have made a soul with or made a deal with the devil with his soul. Like this was submitted by Mr. Double Q to our news. It's just going bad for him now, you know. So first, you know, there's a whole thing with uh, the doctor being dragged off the beaten and dragged off the plane. There was the scorpion falling on the guy's head. Yep, and, and stinging him. Mm -hmm. There was the world cl uh, class rabbit that was what was four feet long. And he died. And it was uh, scheduled to be like it was like this extremely huge, valuable rabbit died. It was, uh, it was the um, it was a spawn of of the the current world's longest rabbit, and it was on its way to become or to break the record. Yep, and uh, died in their care and now i don't feel like this would normally be a story because i'm pretty sure this happens more often than we realize but it's united so uh let's uh open up that bag so this hap this this woman was on a plane in newark and was headed to paris but instead um she was taken to uh where the hell did they take her to uh, she was flown to what is the city by the bay? What is that? What what city by the? What city is that? San Francisco. I you think couldn't it? actually just give us the goddamn name. Um, San Diego. Well, I I wouldn't think so because it's in Europe. Huh. But. All I'm getting is, like, fucking songs. Huh. Well, uh, Lib Lisbon, Portugal City by the Bay. There we go. So she, instead of being taken to France, she was taken to Portugal. Um, they have since corrected her, and, uh, after flying for 28 hours, 
She finally made it to her destination and has been fully reimbursed as well as given additional free airfare. That's cool. But holy crap. I mean, at least it's in Europe where it's easy to get from country to country. I suppose. I mean, it, it's one thing there, but, like, can you imagine accidentally being dropped off and, like, if you're trying to go to, to South Korea and you're accidentally dropped off in the Philippines? Right. And But here is the part that reason why it upset her so much is because there was a last-minute gate change for her flight to Paris. She mm -hmm. was not informed about this last-minute gate change. Okay. Oh, so she got in the wrong gate. Here's the thing, though. She has a boarding pass that says your plane is supposed to be the one that takes you from Newark to Paris. That means somebody wasn't paying attention. Walks up to the, the, the ticket counter or whatever the fuck they're called. Hands them her ticket, her boarding pass. Who is now at a gate for a plane that will fly from Newark to Lisbon. They put it on the scanner and... Scan it, it approves her boarding pass, and they let her on the plane. She goes to the plane, looks at her boarding pass, and goes to her seat. There is somebody in her seat that shows them their boarding pass that says it's their seat. So now there are two boarding passes, both with the same seat number. They grab the flight attendant. The flight attendant takes this lady's ticket who is on the wrong plane reviews it and assigns her a new seat it's it, it, it's not like it, uh, there was so many opportunities for this to, to be caught it. oh my god and it just whee, right by everyone's heads it's so over them and, and she was like, I think this is, is this not a security risk that essentially my just weird piece of paper that's supposed to be my like validation for going on a specific plane, which is like, oh, now you can go on this one. And then everyone on that plane, including the people who worked there, looked at the pass, was like, yep, that's the right plane. Wasn't the right flight number, wasn't the right flight, nothing. No one was paying any attention, holy None. shit. None. Zero clue coming out of that entire airport. It, I just make it, it just feels to me like just United just di gives no fucks at it. Just none. Everyone who's working for United is so just morale beaten because they probably get made fun of constantly for working for United. So yeah. Uh, hashtag uh, undo United. I don't know. Three. What? United we fall. Sure. Pretty much. Norway's Progress Party calls for a ban on circumcision of boys. This was submitted by John Kimball, 111, to Our World News. Nathan, are you circumcised? No. Neither am I. Oh, wait. I am circumcised. <laughs> so the Progress Party in Norway voted on Saturday in favor of a law banning ritual circumcision of children under the age of 16. Sure. Now, the law is not passed yet because it will actually have to be approved by the rest of the governing body. Progress Party just has the largest section of um, the uh, of parliament uh, controlling 29 of 169 seats, but they'll still have to pass it with a majority vote. But basically what they're saying what it is is that the ban is there because they don't feel as though you should be in like cuz ritual circumcision is relating to circumcising because of your religion and they don't feel like you should be forcing your religion upon this baby. I I can understand that. Um it's unfortunate, but I feel like I feel like most genital mutilations or mutilations in general when they're children should be avoided. I also feel like children shouldn't get um you know piercings for the most part, but it's beyond the point. And so now they're, they've already received a massive amount of pushback from the Jewish community where it is very common for people to be circumcised. Um, they feel as though that if this is passed, it is leading to a exclusion of the Jewish culture from Israel, which is where this is being uh, discussed, by the way. Okay. Not, not, no, not, not Israel. It, it's in Norway. Yeah, I was going to say. I can um, read. I... I'm actually for this. 
Well, uh, and, and here, like, the thing is, is at this point in time, because, like, I, I don't know if there was actually ever a legitimate, like, r truly religious reason to do it. I haven't investigated it enough. But I know that my mother did it because when you know, 24 years ago when I was born, she had been taught about all of the health concerns that can c come from someone not being circumcised. But a lot of those concerns are from a very long time ago when hygiene standards were much lower. It's really easy to keep your penis hygienic. Oh. You just, every shower, pull it back, soap it, you're good. Oh, I, yeah, I'm not saying it's difficult, but that would have been difficult, you know, like 100 years ago. Sure, back in the day, soaping down your dick is probably, you know, different. And we wonder why we get tagged for inappropriate uh, content. You get raw lie just all over your dick. I mean, I normally get lies on my dick, but that's a different kind of lie. See, now I'm just imagining, like, words like, uh, like, just like, this man has blonde hair. It's so big. <laughs> Aww. You, Ooh. you and your uh, self degradation, man. I, I am a fan of self deprecation, but I am not a fan of self mutilation. That, 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 that's a good difference to have. Yeah. Two students left a pineapple in the middle of an art exhibition, and people mistook it for art. <laughs> this is some. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, submitted by Raisin91 to R not the end. So, the, uh... <laughs> oh, God. At Gordon University in Scotland, they were having oh. a modern art ex uh, 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 exhibit. Uh, thank you. Exhibition is the word I was looking for. Okay. And there was an empty exhibit. And so there was just a empty little slot, a little little platform. So they went to the store for one pound, bought a bought a pineapple, and set it there just to see how long it would last. Just they just wanted to check to see how long that this pineapple would stay there. They returned four days later, and someone had put it in a glass display case. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta admit, someone went to that, you know, place, looked at that um, pineapple, and was like, you know, same. That's a that's a damn nice pineapple. Now, um, this is also very similar to. Um, it was a couple of years ago that a student went to a modern art exhibit and took a, took a pair of glasses and laid it on the floor towards one of the sides of the room and within about 20 minutes people were coming up to take pictures of the this pair of glasses on the ground i mean it's art people people like seeing you know whatever they want in something that may or may not have it actually there and people connect to things differently and if someone was just looking at a pair of sunglasses and was like damn that glass that pair of glasses on that floor right there that's beautiful it speaks to me right you know what? I bet this is a fucking giant win for our trees. Well, and the, like the the curator of the ex uh, ex the exhibit was like, I didn't even know this. And like they, they saw the pineapple, left it there because they weren't they weren't certain what was going on. Came back twenty minutes later to check on it, and someone had put in this glass display case over top of it. The glass weighs somewhere around a hundred pounds so that you can't easily pick it up to mess with the art underneath. So that means that a group of people would have had to have went in the back, got the glass case to put over this pineapple. That is dedication. And, it, and it's literally just a pineapple. It's not like someone, you know, like carved and like, you know, made a pineapple. Nope. Just a pineapple. Hey, that is, that is art in and of itself. All right. Sure. I'm telling you, though, Artrees is probably pretty happy about this. Are they into pineapples? That's one of their symbols is a pineapple. So if you ever see, like, a snoo hugging a pineapple, that means that person frequents Artrees, and they probably smoke an assload of weed. Okay. 
one. Impeachment proceedings against President Rodrigo Duterte are expected to begin on May 15th. This was submitted by Smarty Might to Our World News. Wow, it took them long enough. So this does not mean that they're going. he's going to be impeached. They just have enough people to begin discussing it. But they need at least 98 or one-third of parliament to actually get the impeachment to go through. For their laws? Yes. That's interesting that you only need a third of people. Um, so those aren't even expected to begin until May 15th, um, but they they have enough now to begin talking about it. And then they'll, they'll actually begin discussing it and seeing how they're going to approach it as well. It's going to be like a, a pseudo trial for Duterte because he is going to be able to speak and debate the topics that are being presented throughout this process. Undoubtedly, the uh, massive amount of murders of his own people because of drugs. Yeah, and that's the main reason, the primary reason genocide. that people are, the, that Parliament is looking to have him removed. Um, except, I don't think it's actually called Parliament for them. Anyway, the, the, their governing body, um, because they are holding him accountable for the alleged 7,000 killings committed during his administration's anti-drug war. And Indeed. that's... Well, how many, okay. how many deaths does it need to be considered genocide? I don't know. Definition of genocide. Uh, the deliberate killing of a large group of special, spe specials. The deliberate killing of a large group of people, especially those of a particular ethnic group or nation. Um, how large does a... How large is a genocide? Maybe, maybe that'll... How do you define genocide? Oh, this is a BBC News article. I don't want to fucking read that because I don't know. Right. Uh, list of genocides by death toll. Maybe we'll look What's at... What's the shrimpiest? Yep, that's where I'm headed. Um, okay, so uh, I'll start at the top. The Holocaust is number one. Mm -hmm. um, lowest estimate with 5 million. Higher estimate with 12.5 million. The um, Generalplan Ost, which was when with Nazi occupied Soviet territories, and that's forty five uh, four and a half million to thirteen point seven million. Uh, more Soviet stuff, more Soviet stuff. Going down to the bottom. Um, here we go. Let's see. So it, this is uh, here's one that isn't based on a percentage the bosnian genocide was roughly 8000 people um, with a possibility of up to 25000 people selknam genocide was in chile but it was against a particular group of uh, uh of, of, of of people it's like ab uh, aboriginals mm -hmm. and they killed 84% of their people but that was only around 3000 Okay. Um, there was also the genocide of Yazidis. So based off of percentage. Yeah. What percent of the Philippines is 7,000? Mm. Probably not, not very much, huh? Uh, population of the Philippines. 100 million. Yeah, so it's not very much. No. But it is still horrible it's acts. It's almost 1%, though. Yeah. It's yeah. like 0. 0.000... 000 Seven percent. Sure. I think is that right? Uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna do the math. I, I think so. And uh, hey, Nathan. What? I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. What do you care about in the last seventy-two hours? Oh, I played an assload of Overwatch. Yeah. Was it good? Pretty fun. It was. It was good. I, I won more of my get more of my games than I lost. So you know, I feel like that was a decent percentage. But they were all casual games, so it, it didn't really count. Casual scrub. Um, there was. I, I was looking through my emails, deleting all four hundred something that I hadn't checked because they were just you know mostly just shit emails. But I noticed that one of them was from Kickstarter. I've only pledged one thing on Kickstarter, and I think I'm gonna up the pledge by ten dollars. But. Uh, let's, um, let's see how many things I have supported on Kickstarter, shall we? Because I've supported a few things. The This one that I supported is almost a year late, but that's to be normal. fair, 
to be fair, the guy uh, got married, and that took a lot of his time away. Um, okay. I know that this... I know this is inaccurate. Um, because I backed uh, the album Permanence, which is uh, by Death Mole. Um, log out. Let's see if I can't find... Uh, log me in. See if this has the info. And Death Mole is the band that uh, that was created by the guy who draws um, uh, shit. What the fuck is that webcomic called? Um, the thing. Pulling up a blank. Um, oh, no. Damn, I can't fucking remember right now. So the one that the one that I supported, right? I supported it for thirty dollars. I think I'm gonna add an extra uh, ten so that I can get a hardcover copy. But it's called Horrors, and it's a scary story RPG. And it's an RPG based off of the scary stories to tell in the dark books. You can tell that it's based off of them because of the the, the art style. Uh, it was. It is questionable content. Is the uh, name of the webcomic. Um. Oh, never mind. The funding period's over. But I have I had funded it and. Uh, there is an update semi recently at the beginning of October. Were they successful? Uh, they are. Uh, he's given it to a person to double check for um, uh, mistakes and everything, and then it's going to get formatted into PDF, and he's going to send off the the PDFs, uh, which anyone who donated gets a PDF copy of it, and then it's going to go off to the printers, and I should be getting my um, my soft cover in sometime this year. Cool. Um, um, so I have only backed four Kickstarter projects. Mm -hmm. um, I backed um, Permanence by Death Mole, which was an album. Um, Divinity Original Sin 2, video game. Uh, and that one is in, it, it is in early access right now. Uh, Mediocre Monster, uh, the life of an RPG monster. It's a video game as well. Um you play as the random mobs that RPG guys fight. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then I backed third edition books, which they are translating these big, awesome books from France, which are all based on video games. Oh, um, cool. I attempted to back a couple other projects. I attempted to try and back a video game called High, High School Possession, but it was canceled. I also put backing on a video game called Tears of Avia, but that kickstarter was unsuccessful like it got a ton of support right in its last two days because it like was one of the recommended projects by a big successful project but it was just barely too late like they just it, like they had gotten no traction before then that's unfortunate it was because it looked like it was going to be a really good game but otherwise i like i'll look at tons and tons of kickstarter stuff and not support any of it mm-hmm I'm really excited about this horrors though, because they have this really sick mechanic. Sure. Uh, it's called the fumbling mechanic. Okay. When you fail a roll, you can instead attempt to to try it again. Um, but if you attempt to try it again and mess up, there's an even worse um. There's an even worse result. Oh, okay. They also have this thing where it's like, hey, normally opening doors and doing normal shit, you can just do it, right? Yeah. But if the, the monster is chasing you, because this is all about um, essentially running away from like a, a horror movie monster yeah. or dealing with it. If the monster is chasing you, you have to roll for literally everything you do because you're, you're either wounded or you're scared. And so opening that door might actually be kind of difficult, especially if it's locked and you have to shove a key into it. Okay. Neat. Um, so there's a couple other things. But it's mostly a horror tabletop RPG, which is supposed to be opened up enough for it to not have very, very narrowed down into horror uh, settings or too broad of a category for most horror settings. All right. And the art style is based off of scary stories to tell in the dark. So, you know, they got that cool, scary shit going on. Two things I cared about. One, uh, I had a three-day weekend. I was off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, Friday and Saturday, I spent all day at the United We Roll Roller Derby Tournament for the state of Alaska, and that was a ton of fun. I announced 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 games of roller derby. Nice. Yep, completely alone. 
that's that's pretty sick. Yeah, it was a lot of fun though. It's a great sport. It was just it was great. It was a great time. The other thing I cared about is uh, something that Nathan's not going to get to hear the music to, but uh, we'll see the video for in just a second because I cared about this awesome crap. Uh, play. got a new intro got a whole new intro video it looks good it looks awesome got some sick music that nathan can't hear but everyone else can yep can't hear a damn thing can you see the video though now is it playing I for can. you and i could technically turn on the audio for the video and do it but i really don't want to that's fair can't find my way around that that's cool either way though it looks good uh, thank you very much to our patrons. You are the ones that paid for that to uh, be a thing that exists at all. Thank you immensely. Um, just big shout out to our patrons that actually support us each month with uh, with their wallets. Thank you, Kendall. I think it is a great new intro that I did completely by myself. Oh, uh, wink. <laughs> no, we paid for it with money. Yeah, you're right. I didn't do anything for it. Now, it was... I talked, I talked, and people enjoyed it, and that's what I did to get that intro. Good job, good job, buddy. Power to you. Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, other than that, though, uh, I'm ready to uh, to get out of here. You ready? Yeah, I'm too. Gonna go get some food. Yeah, I took some ibuprofen during the show, and it's kind of working, but I'm just kind of dizzy. I, I think we can drink some more water because I've been drinking a lot of that and probably fall asleep again. I'm gonna take drinking my water right now. Mm. Either that, or I might play the Secret World. Who knows? Yeah, you know, fuck sleep, right? Yeah, no one needs that. Sleep is for the dead. Well, if you would also like to help support this show, everybody, please go to patreon.com slash daily internet. Help keep this show going. Allow us to do fun new things. We would like to do more episodes each week and create new shows. And the only way to do that is uh, if we have uh, the money and time to do so. And one of those <laughs> is able buy me to a buy the spinner. other. I'll buy you a fidget spinner. Yeah. That way I'm not, you know, constantly flicking these cards in my hand. But, 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 but cards. It's true, but I'm going to be opening these up. Otherwise, because... everybody, just, uh, just follow us on social media. If you want to follow me on any form of social media, I'm at Schwan Michael. Nathan is at Bimenstein. Um, you can also find the show on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. All of those are at iReditCast. Or leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. Five star. It increases our visibility a lot if you will go and leave that. It doesn't cost anything. Just go there, five star review, say whatever you want in the little comment box. And that Even share our, U or our Facebook video with your, with your friends when it pops up. Yeah, just anything along those lines. There are plenty of free ways to immensely help, help out the show just by increasing our visibility. Otherwise, if you would like to join us in the live uh, feed for when we do the show, we do the show every night monday through thursday at 10 p.m pacific daylight time and that is on our facebook page we do do it through facebook live otherwise just send us an email feedback.ireda at gmail.com or you can find us uh, uh you can just call and leave us a voicemail that's the word i'm looking for which is uh 508-738-2278 um i'm still going to actually do you do we still want to play outro music or do you just want to fucking just end the show just just cut it off hardcore um let's do the outro music but I, i'm tired of saying kevin mcleod's name <laughs> but that's okay that's fair so i mean I, what i can do is i can just fade to the logo and then end the stream all right but i have one thing to say about kevin mcleod he's awesome okay he is awesome and we are no we, we might just no longer have his intros but that doesn't that doesn't mean we won't ever use him again i'm just gonna say another time mcleod <laughs> you're terrible i don't think i am that's all right well actually i do but that's the end the point all right everybody that is your 283rd dose of the internet i am michael schwan and i'm nathan wood have a good day everyone goodbye <laughs>